Hey, it's Emily. Uh, today I'm going to be doing my September weight loss update. Today is September 30th and I want to talk about how much weight I have lost this month. I have some good news and then I have some bad news about my weight loss as well. Um, I had to learn some lessons this month. Uh, was not expecting that, but, um, so here we go. <laughs> I'm going to begin by telling you how much I've lost this month during September on the six week plan <laughs> for eat to live or the end of dieting. This is the updated book by Joel Furman, his latest book. So anyway, that's the program I'm on. And um, after I tell you how much I've lost, I'm gonna tell you the struggle that I had this, what I struggled with this month, and then just kind of overall how am I going, or how am I doing and how's the weight loss going. Okay, so for the month of September, I weighed myself this morning, and I'm gonna say that I have lost 10 pounds in the month of September because my scale <laughs> is being kind of weird and it's telling me one minute that I'm down 13 pounds and then I'm down 10 pounds, anywhere between 10 to 14 pounds for the month of September. So I'm just gonna go with 10 because <laughs> I feel like it's the most realistic, especially what has been going on this month with me and it may just be time to put new batteries in my scale. But um, I weighed myself several times and 10 pounds came up more often than anything else. So I'm gonna go with 10 pounds. So yay, I'm down another 10 pounds this month and I am feeling good. I feel like I look like I'm down another 10 pounds, I can feel feel it off of me. I feel lighter. I feel great. <laughs> so I'm really super excited about that. Um, but I, I, before I move on to other good stuff, I want to talk about the challenge I had this month because this is going to take up some time and I'm tr going to try not to talk about it for too long. Um, but I experienced an issue that actually caused me to put on some pounds this month and I was able to take those back off but it was a huge setback and and it was a lesson learned so um this is a TMI subject so I'm gonna really uh not go into the gory details but this month it was that time of the month for me <laughs> And I uh, normally I get cramps, I get a little emotional, and then I'm fine. Uh, that's how it goes for me every month. But for the first time in my entire life today, uh, in September, I experienced something different with my cycle. And I experienced a migraine. And I can't really say I've ever really had a migraine before. So this was like my first real migraine that I've ever had pretty much in my entire life. I've never had something that I would describe as more painful than just your headache. And I actually went, um, I woke up this way on the first day of my cycle and um, um, I was like, what is going on? And I tried to go on my morning walk that morning. I was in too much pain. I ended up going on a much shorter walk and then came home. And I proceeded to, well, what do you think I did? Um, I was in horrible pain and it's something I've never experienced before. So of course I turned to food. That's what I did. I turned to food and I proceeded to emotionally eat. So I had this, 
what I later found out is called a hormonal headache. That is the term. Never, I never knew that this existed. Seriously, I've never experienced this before. And so I figured out what it was. Just, I actually went on Facebook to the Eat to Live group and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> and I described what was going on with me and some very nice ladies in there told me you're having a horm hormonal headache or a hormonal migraine. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And apparently this could happen every month from now on. I don't know what's gonna happen. So, so yeah. Um, for the two days, it lasted two full days, like a complete 48 hours, maybe more. And I was in extreme pain. I felt like there was like a hammer. Someone was hammering my head right here. And it was like excruciatingly painful. And I could barely even work. I could barely do anything. I spent a lot of time laying on the couch. And I was eating more calories during this time. So in a way, I'm kind of proud of myself because normally when something horrible, painful happens to me, I go straight to junk food, straight to junk food. So I didn't do that, which is wonderful, but I just started eating more, like I started snacking, and I haven't been snacking in like probably two or three months. <laughs> so I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a while. So I started snacking, I started eating way more fruit than I have been lately, is eating way more nuts and seeds, things that have more calories that if you eat a lot of it, it's really going to pack in the calories, and not eating enough vegetables, too much fruit, too much nuts, that sort of thing. And, um, and then, and I didn't just let it go on for two days. No, I continued the emotional eating for a total of five days. And during those five days, I put on four and a half pounds. And I was super sad about that. Um, I was really pretty depressed when I stepped on the scale because I realized, okay, I need to stop. I'm getting out of control. Like on day five, I realized like, okay, for the past five days, I've been losing it. <laughs> you know, I've been eating way too much and I need to figure this out. So um, I stepped on the scale and sure enough, I'd put on four and a half pounds. And so I went back to the six week plan, which I enjoy being on anyway. You know, why did I feel like I needed to go off of the six week plan that I'm already happy with? So and it's so frustrating, but so it took me five days to put on four and a half pounds. And then it's taken me like eight days to take that off again. <laughs> so it goes on so easily, doesn't it? <laughs> When you mindlessly eat, you can really pack a lot of calories in. So, I don't know. I just, I don't want this to happen again. I don't want to be wasting my time because it really is a waste of my time. If I'm going to overeat, and I'm talking like really overeat <laughs> for five days, and then put on weight and then have to work really hard to take it off again. And I say work really hard because it took me like eight days to get those four and a half pounds off. That's, you know, a lot longer than it took to put it on. So it was frustrating for me and um, I just don't want to do that anymore, you know? I don't want to be stuck in the merry-go-round of up and down weight because I can't control myself. And I know that this would have never happened if I hadn't experienced something negative like this painful migraine thing. So, and it also occurred to me, um, you know, after the five days of this, when I decided, okay, I'm going to start walking again, I'm going to start going back on the six week plan. Um, it occurred to me like, 
you know, I'm hurting myself. Every time I put on weight, I'm hurting myself. And I already know this from a medical standpoint, but I really, it really sunk in. When I was on my walks, I was kind of like meditating on this sort of, you know, and realizing that every time I go up and down, up and down, up and down, that is not, my body doesn't like that. I don't feel good when I, when I put on some pounds, I don't feel good. I feel sluggish and um, I feel like I'm self-sabotaging and I don't want to do that to my body, to myself, to anything. So I just don't want to do it. And so I've decided I need a plan. If this happens to me again next month, I'm going to do the same thing because what do I do? I turn to food. And so I'm trying to keep, like, devise a plan on what I should do if I have this hormonal migraine again next month. And um, I'm really not sure what to do uh, other than I'm thinking, well, I could make myself go on a walk, uh, like on the full walk, even if I have this headache. I just don't know if I can force myself to do it. Um, but I'm thinking if I did do it, I would probably actually feel better, even though I still had a headache, but I think I would actually probably feel better. Um, I do practice meditation and I do believe that even if you're not a spiritual person, um, you can still meditate because it's been working for me. It always calms me down and maybe I can do more of that, um, you know, more often while I'm feeling this way because I don't want to use food as a comfort anymore. I need to find something else to comfort. You know, how do you comfort yourself when you don't feel good or when you're in pain? What do you do? You know, really leave in the comments, please. I would love your help because, you know, if you're really in pain, what can you do to feel better? I don't know. So, I have a couple ideas and that's about it. I've also thought about acupuncture uh, because my friend goes to acupuncture and um, I was just thinking maybe I could try that. So anyway, that was totally uh, frustrating, but I did, I was able to take off those four and a half pounds, but it was frustrating and it was a waste of my time, waste of my progress a waste of my, you know, that was like two weeks of the month that were kind of a waste of my time. So I don't want to do that anymore. Okay. So, um, so for this year, 2014, I've lost 45 or over 45 pounds between 45 and 50 pounds so far. And I think that is great. When I do make it to the 50 pound mark, I would actually kind of like to celebrate a little bit, uh, celebrate my progress. And I'm not sure how I'm going to celebrate that, but I think I might do that by going snowshoeing. Snowshoeing is something I've been wanting to try for years, but being out in the cold never appear appealed to me in the past. So I am actually trying to find winter hobbies that I can do during the winter that will be fun and exciting for me so I won't just be like usually in the winter I get kind of like a little bit depressed and like bored out of my mind because I like the sun I like to be out in the sun so I'm trying to find ideas to keep me active and having something to look forward to during the winter months so um I have bought a little bit of the uh, equipment that I will need. I bought a uh, waterproof snow, uh, I mean, um, what are they called? Hiking boots, waterproof hiking boots. And I bought a winter jacket that is warm enough to wear out in the snow. And now I just need like ski pants and um, snowshoes, or I'll rent the snowshoes probably. But um, that's what I'm gonna do to celebrate my when I do really make sure that I have reached that 50 pound weight loss mark. And then I think from here, I have anywhere from like 
60 to 100 pounds left to go. <laughs> I have quite a ways to go, but that's okay. I will do it at my own pace. Okay, um, I am no longer snacking in the evening. I used to have, um, since I work at night, I get off work at 10 o'clock at night and I usually get hungry around 8 o'clock. And it's not true hunger, it's more like there's a vending machine near me at work and there's a pizza place and people bring pizza in and it's right by where I sit and I can smell it and I'm like, I need food. Well, in the past week, I think it's probably been about a week, maybe a little more, just over a week, I stopped bringing a snack to work so I used to usually have like frozen grapes and it was kind of like having a dessert, but I'm no longer doing that. I have just decided that uh, I wanted to stop and that's for a couple different reasons. Um, I've been having a hard time sleeping and I believe it's because I get off at 10 o'clock at night and I used to go to bed at 10 and now I'm trying to get in bed by 11 and I have a hard time falling asleep within an hour after getting off of work because like my brain is so stimulated from work that I have a hard time just going straight to bed. But I've been trying to get in the habit of just doing that anyway. And I hope that <laughs> this works, but I think maybe not having a snack in the evening may actually help me sleep better because I think if I have the grapes, that I normally eat as a snack at eight o'clock. If I have that, my digestion, you know, I'm still digesting food by the time I go to bed. I don't know, but I kind of assume maybe I still am, and maybe that's why it's hard for me to fall asleep, but I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. All I know is um, Sunday night, I did not sleep well because I had dinner way too late, and I know that caused me to basically not be able to fall asleep because I could feel the digestion going on like in my stomach. It felt like food was just sitting in there and then I just, I don't know, I, it was hard for me to sleep. So I have cut out this uh, evening snack and I think it's helping me sleep better but I don't really know. Um, and so my energy is still great. Actually, um, energy wise I'm doing wonderful and in fact there are some days where I go and have my walk and I feel so energized and I feel so much joy for just feeling healthier it just makes me feel more joy and I feel energy and so I want to start like jogging or something you know because I want to expend more of this energy but I'm still obese my weight is too high. I've injured my knee in the past from trying to run at a heavy weight. Um, my joints don't like that. So I don't think I'm going to start jogging until I've taken off maybe another 50 pounds or so. Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to take a longer route when I walk now because the route that I'm walking when I first started doing this back in, what was it, like July, um, it would take me almost a full hour. And now for me to walk the same route, it only takes me 30 minutes or just over 30 minutes, depending, you know. So 30 minutes, I mean, that's a lot less than I was doing. I'm still covering the same amount of mileage, but I can do it faster now. So um, I'm just going to extend my route a little bit. And then this winter, I'm going to try snowshoeing and hopefully I like it. I'm so excited. I hope I like it because then that could be another way for me to expend more of this energy that I have inside of me that I want to give. Um, but, you know, someday when I do lose more weight, I would kind of, I think I want to get into jogging. I don't know. I think that sounds fun to me. And... Um, 
I can really tell my body's changing. In a in one of my uh, not too long ago videos, I talked about a pair of shorts that I held up, and um, these shorts I couldn't wear them last summer, but then like summer 2013, but then summer 2014, because of Mute to Live, I was finally able to get into those shorts again. Well, now they're too big. I can't even wear them anymore because they're huge and they fall off. They literally fell, fall off and I wore them um, to a friend's house and we went and did stuff and the whole time I was having to like hold on to my shorts and this was a couple of weeks ago. So now the winter, you know, fall is setting in. I'm not going to wear those anymore, but I'm not going to wear those next summer. Nope, they're too big. And so, yeah, my body, I'm seeing changes in my body. I don't know if you can tell. Probably not. <laughs> this is what I look like. I don't know if there's any difference. Belly dance pose. So I don't know if there's any difference from my last video, if you can tell or not, but um, I can tell by my clothing, um, all my clothing is finally fitting me again, or now it's like I've surpassed that and some things are falling off of me, which is really cool. All of my capris uh, that I was wearing during this summer, um, they're falling off. I'm not going to be able to wear them next summer. <laughs> so, and then... I have a pair of jean pants that I'm fitting into that are older that I can fit into again. So overall, I'm very happy and I'm going to continue this. I'm going to figure out the the migraine thing and um, I'll research that more and figure that out. And you know what? I will see you in October for my next update. Look for it. At the end of October. Thank you so much for watching me and following my journey with me. Bye.